Father, we are thankful that this time we celebrate, you started at the beginning of time, you had a plan to come and save your world that you created. And so we, in this moment, we remember when Jesus came to this earth, but it's from that moment forward, we proclaim your salvation to the ends of the earth. I think of the song, go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere that Jesus Christ is born. This is a time that we are lifted with hope and joy because you didn't leave us alone on this earth, but you came, Emmanuel, God, with us to give your life for every person here. And so we proclaim how good you are, how great you are, and how loving you are, Father. We thank you for sending your son. Thank you for these hymns, these carols that we sing that draw our hearts to what is true about you. We thank you for this time this evening. It's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Good to see all of you. I want to invite you at this time to turn around and welcome the people around you, but I want you to give them your favorite, if you have a tradition, Christmas Eve tradition. What do you got going on this evening? Turn around and greet the people around you there. Merry Christmas. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. My name is Melissa. I'm one of the pastors here at the church, and I'm so thankful that you and your families are here to celebrate with us tonight. Um, I have just a few announcements uh, before we get going in the rest of our service. The first one is um, we will not be here tomorrow for service on Sunday morning, so don't come. Please stay home and do Christmas with your family, but we will be back uh, the following Sunday, which is New Year's Day, but we will have service on New Year's Day. Um, secondly, we are going to start a um, um, three-week, month-long prayer and fasting coming in January. Um, our denomination, Foursquare, does this every year and encourages all our churches to participate, so we are going to do that this year. Um, there are some great resources. You can sign up for a daily email. You can grab a packet in the lobby if you have a family. They've got daily activities and prayer guidelines for families um, all throughout the month of January. That It actually starts January 9th, so we have some time to get back from New Year's and get going in it, but I would highly encourage you to do it. We did it last year as a family. It was really good, so... Um, and lastly, I just wanted to give you an update between our church and your generous giving uh, for our Advent giving this year. We gave around $7,400 to our Advent partners. So that is Anna Cordes Family Center, King's Den, Pioneer Bible, Compassion First, and Youth Dynamics. So Awesome job. Thank you so much for giving. If you did not get a chance to give and you would still like to, you can still designate an offering to that, whether it's in the box or online as well. So um, that is it. But at this time, this is like the best part of the service. If you are a kid and you would like to hear a story, please come in the front right here. Pastor Tim is going to read. Jeff's going to lead the way. <laughs> Tim's going to, Pastor Tim is going to read a book to you, but you have to be up here to see the pictures, and it's got lights in it, so you should come forward, and just come sit right here on the ground, and it'll be short, and then you can go back to your mommy and daddy. And, and yeah, Jeff, come, come on up. I mean, a kid at heart, I, I'll take those too. I mean, it's never too old, right? Uh, or advanced in years, as we talked about last week. You're not old, just advanced. All right, guys, you ready? It's Christmas Eve. You're all man, looking good. All right, this is our Christmas story. I'll, I'll back up and, or get down here so you can see the pictures, and then I got to be able to read. And if you really want, yeah, I knew it. You're just going to look up at the screen. No, it's better here. There's lights, cool lights. All right, however you want to look at it. A long time ago, on a dark winter's night, Mary and Joseph arrived in Bethlehem looking for a place to stay. Do you think they found one? No. 
No, yeah, you know the story. Mary was going to have a baby very soon. They knocked on every door, but no one had room for them until they met a kindly innkeeper. Oh, he's a nice man. You can sleep in my stable if you'd like, he said. You guys notice anything funny in these pictures? No, that, that, oh, it's still there. But see all the cats? I think there are that many cats around this village, I think. Uh, oh, there is a dog too. Yeah, interesting. All right. Inside the stable, Mary had a baby boy and they named him Jesus. They made a soft bed for a baby Jesus in a manger full of hay. And there he slept all wrapped up and warm. There he is. Baby Jesus wrapped up, and there's the cat sitting right next to the bird. You think he's eyeing that bird? Oh. What else you got going there? Oh, is that? What's that? Lizard. Hmm, interesting. I like that. Lots of different animals. Yeah, you see it too, huh? Out on the hills, some shepherds suddenly saw an angel appear in a sparkle of light. Baby Jesus has been born in Bethlehem, said the angel. He is the son of God. The shepherds were amazed and set off to find him. Where is this baby? Look at all those stars. Isn't that cool? Lights them up right around the angel. They're still on, game. Boom. Far, far away, three wise men saw a bright, twinkling star in the sky. The star will lead us to it, they said. Something very special must have happened. So they set off following the star all the way to Bethlehem. What do they got? They're riding some interesting things. What? I thought it was camels, but apparently they got elephants too. I mean, what? We don't really know. I don't think it says. What? You think I'm being silly? The shepherds gathered around to see baby Jesus, and the wise men brought him wonderful gifts. Everyone was very happy. This was the very first Christmas. There you go. All, everyone around. Anybody notice anything cool? What do you like the best? Shout it out. Best animal. Go. Oh, wow. That was really quiet. I was expecting... <laughs> All right, there we go. All right, well, good job listening. You guys are set. You're nice and calm. You can go back to your seats. Thank you guys for coming. Yes, give them a hand. Well, you know, kids, you did a great job. I hope you pay attention as much. I, I will try to be as quick as possible and keep your attention, but no, uh, it won't be as short as that story. Hey, we uh, are just thankful that you guys are here. Did you guys enjoy the snow? How many out there are playing in the snow over this last week? Surprise. Not quite a white Christmas. I don't know how that much snow disappears that quickly, but it did. I woke up this morning thinking, no way could that be gone, and it was pretty much gone. But, uh, you know, I, I always like my sister, she lives in California, never gets snow down there, and she gets sun all the time. So she's like, oh, yeah, it's sunny and 70 all the time. I'm like, oh, okay, thank you, thank you. So every once in a while, I get to send her a picture, say, hey, we got snow. Aren't you jealous? And she does, yeah, Christmas time especially. Hey, I hope you enjoy the week. We're here. All the shopping's done, right? No, one's, no more stores open in Anacortes, right? You, you got to go somewhere else. So you guys are good. You're done. I am too. I was done a day early, actually. So the snow helped me out this year. Hey, uh, we have been in a series as a church called The Songs of Christmas. So really, we've been looking at people's responses to the coming of Jesus. The songs or the declarations that they sang. Songs connect, often songs are connections to stories. There's something that's going on and we are responding to that story. You think of, in scripture, you could think of Moses and all the children of Israel sang a song after they were delivered from captivity in Egypt. They went through the Red Sea and on the other side as that sea closed in and they were free from their slavery, they sang in celebration that God had set them free. David, a man who wrote many songs, 
he, in many different situations, both songs of lament and songs of joy, songs of pain, songs of laughter, there was, there was many different ways that David responded to what God was doing. And there were these songs that came out of him. I think of different hymns that we sing, and one that I love is It Is Well With My Soul. That song, though, was written out of a lot of pain and sorrow. A man who had lost his children, and what he could just declare in that moment is, though all this goes wrong, though all this goes differently than I wanted, still I will say it is well with my soul. Songs connect us often to stories, and you see it in creation even. There is this response to what is going on around us. When do the birds start singing? As it begins to lighten up. They start to sing a song. I don't know why they do this. Anybody know? But wolves howl at the moon, right? The, the moon's out, and they just tend to, to respond to what is going on around them with their song, if you will. We have people who cheer or boo in response to their team, how their team is doing. Seahawks, sorry today. That uh, probably was a lot of booing. I don't know. They're not looking so hot, but I have no idea how the Eagles did, Ezra. Thank you. <laughs> um, we have these responses to situations. And as we come to Christmas and as we come to Jesus, how will we respond to the coming of Christ. The question for each one of us is how are we responding to Jesus today? And how will we respond to him? We're going to look at several different characters through the Christmas story and their responses to Jesus. And then hopefully we'll see ourselves and some of these people and how they responded. And then we, again, the same, respond as they did. I want to pray as we begin this, mor or this evening. <laughs> it's not morning, no. Father, we thank you. We pause because you are worthy of our praise. You're worthy of us all taking time out of a night when we could do various other things and saying, God, we put you first. You are a God who sent his son to the earth to bring salvation and hope to a very dark world. And we thank you that even this morning or this evening, we can allow your light to shine through us to this world. I pray that we would again grab on to the hope that you have for us tonight, this evening, that your spirit would speak to each one of us and that we would respond to you by saying yes today. We thank you for this time together. Amen. Well, uh, some of the kids, if you have your uh, bags open and already going through it, you actually are going to have a lot of these characters that we go over here tonight. We're going to look at a lot of different people around, surrounding Christ tonight. And many of them we've briefly touched on through our Advent series, The Songs of Christmas. So if you have those stickers out, you can do that. Um, whatever you want to do, keep yourself uh, occupied and listening along. I want to begin by talking about Mary. She's that obvious first choice. She had the opportunity to respond to Jesus very early on when an angel came to her. In Luke 1, 38, 35 through 38, it says this. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you, so the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who is said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Mary was faced with a life-altering decision, right? Am I going to receive what this angel is saying or reject it? Yet she willingly trusted God's plan. She said yes to his way. 
In fact, later, if you read her song, there is this humility about even being chosen by God, knowing full well the consequences of saying yes to this. People would look at her differently, think of her as odd, crazy, however, a liar, whatever they wanted to characterize her as, by saying yes to what God was doing in this moment, saying yes to being the earthly mother of Jesus. She was choosing to trust God's way. We see Joseph, who was engaged to Mary, and I can only imagine in those moments as she communicated this story to him, I, I, I would feel doubt, frustration, feeling like, how could you do this to me, Mary? And yet, what, did, what happened? God came to Joseph in a dream. And he came to him and told him, hey, this is from me. What's going on in Mary is from me. Now, Joseph had a choice to make in that moment. He could have said, forget it. No, that's crazy. That was bad pizza I ate. I don't know that dream. It's just my emotions playing tricks on me. Whatever. He could have just pushed that away and walked off and just said, Mary, I'm leaving you. But Joseph didn't. When his life intersected Jesus, the coming Savior, he chose to say yes. This would have made him look crazy. Can you imagine the talk around town that was, not only were they pointing at Mary and thinking, wow, this is a crazy lady that's going to go around and say, yes, I'm having God's son. But now we got a guy who believes this girl. How much more gullible can you be? Think of the ridicule and the criticism they would have gotten from their own hometown. You see, when we say yes to Jesus, our lives can sometimes look crazy to the world. We make decisions to follow his leading that the world looks at and say, why would you live that way? Why would you say yes to that? And that's exactly, though, what Joseph did. Zacharias, who we saw in the first week of our series, his first response to an angel coming to him and saying, you're going to have a baby son or your wife Elizabeth in her old age is going to have a baby son. His first response was one of doubt. Then he got some time to think it over by being silent for nine, probably ten months at least. It's a long time of silence, a lot of time with your own thoughts to think about your choice to doubt God. And what is his declaration after that season of silence. He begins to prophesy about the Messiah, who he will be, and he even prophesies about his own son and says he will be the one who prepares the way for the Messiah. He believes what God was doing. It took him some time, but you see God's grace in the middle of that. Even in our doubts, he walks with us and leads us to a place of trust. Elizabeth, Zachariah's wife, affirmed Mary. And you see her response to Jesus as Mary walks in is to say, blessed are you among women. And there's this affirmation that Elizabeth gives to Mary, and I have to believe that that meant a ton to Mary. Because here is Mary, probably young, 14, 15-year-old, and she's dealing with a lot of people who are doubting her. And then Elizabeth, who is an older woman, comes and strengthens and supports her and says, I believe in what God is doing in you, Mary. Her response, Elizabeth's response to the Savior is one to say, I trust that he is coming through Mary, through the Messiah, the Messiah's coming through this woman. We see the angels what did they do? They sang out their song, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace on whom his favor rests. There was de declaration of peace to all who would believe in him. We can't have that kind of peace without trusting Jesus Christ as our savior. We have kind of pseudo peace in this world where we buy something, it feels like, oh, this is nice for a while, and then it eventually wears off. We get into that relationship we've been longing to for so long, we think, this is great, I got some peace in my life, and then, you know, as normal, the conflict, uh, two people don't always blend together well, and that peace goes away. True peace, lasting peace only comes when we commit our heart and life to Jesus Christ. 
And the angels were declaring this peace on earth, goodwill to all who would his favor rest, to all who would believe in him. Psalm 103, 20 to 22 says this, Bless the Lord, O you angels, you mighty ones who do his word, obeying the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers who do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. The angels were declaring praise to God because he has sent his son, the one who would bring peace to this world. This is the angel's response to the coming of Jesus. And who were they sh shouting this message to or declaring this to? It was to the shepherds. What was the shepherds' response? They heard the angels singing. The angels told them where to find Jesus. And what does Luke write but that they hurried off to see this? It wasn't like, oh, okay, well, let me finish tending to the sheep. Let me make sure everything's good here. No, there's this idea of like, I'm going to go out and find is this true? And when they found Jesus, just as the angels declared, what did they do? They went and shared it with everybody. It says that they went and told everyone they could of what had happened. The Messiah, the Savior, was here. It is very similar to what we talked about last week with Anna, where she was this old... Hmm, Advanced in years woman, uh, as Luke likes to write, advanced in years woman who had waited and longed to see the Messiah. And when the Messiah came, she was so overjoyed that she would tell anyone who would listen to her. Is that your response to Jesus today? Are you so overjoyed at the work that he has done in your life that you just want to share him with anyone who will listen? Simeon was another man who had waited a long time to see Jesus. And when he finally did, what was his response? I can die in peace. Wouldn't that be interesting if that was our perspective on life? When we met the Savior, that we would just say, God, my life's complete. I can go any time now. We don't have this desire to hold on to the earthly things, to live for this life, but we really just let go and say, I know my eternity is secure. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, and I'm just going to live whatever time, however long, I can die now at peace. That was Simeon's response. His response shows us that his hope goes well beyond this temporal life. And finally, we see the Magi. They saw this star. They were searching for the heavens. They were watching the heavens. And when the sign appeared that a savior, that a king had been born, they packed up all that they had or whatever they needed for this journey and set out on a long journey to find the savior. And what was their response to Jesus in that moment? It was to fall on their knees in worship, to offer him gifts when they found him. These are many people that surround the birth of Christ. And this was their responses to his coming. Trust, leaving what they had to go find him, a hurried desire to go and, and, and see is this true and then share it with everybody. These are the responses that the people had around Jesus. But not all of them were positive. Actually, it's interesting that really, I would say, 95% are positive responses that Scripture records. But there's one. One who is different. King Herod, in Matthew chapter 2, we read, when he found out about Jesus, this king that was to be born, what was his response to Jesus? Fear, control. He was afraid that he would lose his kingdom, and he couldn't have that. So what was his response? He sent out a decree to kill all the children two years old and under, to make sure that his kingdom would be secure. When we respond like Herod in fear and control to the coming 
of the Savior. It brings destruction into our lives and to the lives of those around us. Herod is a picture of a person who is rejecting Christ. And the, the havoc that plays not only on their life personally, but out into the world around them. So how we respond to Jesus is absolutely important. You see, all of these people surrounded the birth of Christ. But as we move into the ministry years of Jesus, I'll briefly mention a few other groups of people that were, and how they responded to Jesus. We see the disciples, and they said yes to Jesus, not fully understanding what that meant and where that would lead, but they trusted him, and they began to follow. Have you done that? Have you trusted him and begun to follow? We see the Pharisees, and much like Herod, they feared losing their power and authority. And so what did they do? They set themselves out to destroy Jesus out of fear of losing their power and control. We see others who seemed to use Jesus. There was 10 lepers. They came to him for healing. Nine went away and just rejoiced over the healing that he gave them. Only one came back to thank him. Is that your response? Is that our response to Jesus? Just what I need when I need you? What is our response to Jesus? There are many more situations we could talk about tonight. But the question is, what is your response to Jesus? How do you respond to him today? Maybe you're like the Magi and you're on a journey to find him. You've kind of seen this uh, distant, like, ah, is this really true? You've packed up your bags and you're kind of on this journey to see, could there really be this Savior sent to earth? Could I believe that, that the Son of God would come to earth and then die on the cross? I met a young man in Starbucks a couple weeks ago, and I was talking with him about Jesus, and he just kind of came to this point where, he, you know, I, when we asked him, there was another gentleman with me, we asked him, like, what, well, what do you believe about Jesus? Like, I, I can't believe in Jesus. The fact that God, God would become human, that just seems like crazy. I, I, I can't grasp that. And it was a good conversation, but it ultimately led it, he was at a place where he's just like, I, I can't believe that. But are you like the Magi, maybe on a journey to find Jesus? Jesus said in Matthew 7, 7, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. If you are truly seeking Jesus Christ, you will find him. He will show you, show himself to you. As you keep going, I encourage you then, when you see him revealed, as the Magi came to Jesus, their response was to fall on their knees in worship to him. But that would be our response when we finally meet the Savior. Maybe tonight you're like Anna and, sh and the shepherds. You know Jesus, and you just want to share that with the world. Can I encourage you? Go do that. There's a lot of hopeless people, especially in this season. When we look at the, the songs of Christmas that we sing, it's about family and being together and all cozy and nice, and we know that's not the reality. It's hard enough even as believers to have good family interactions around this time of the year. How much more as unbelievers, there's hurt and pain, division that has come in that the enemy's brought in and so we as we say this is what Jesus has done we get to bring hope into those situations maybe tonight you fall more on that side of King Herod or the religious leaders you're protecting your kingdom control over your life is what you care about most you like the idea of Jesus as Savior, but there is no way that you'll allow him to be Lord. You know what is best for your life, and when it conflicts with the way of Jesus, you won't give in. 
The interesting thing about Jesus is he doesn't force his way on anyone. He doesn't push his way in. He allows us to have the choice. But even though he doesn't force his way, his way will happen. Herod tried to kill him. Couldn't kill him. The Pharisees, they tried to kill him, succeeded in killing him. But what did he do? He rose from the grave grave victorious over sin and death. He is Lord and his way will ultimately always succeed. So we may think our way is better and like Herod, we want to protect our kingdom. But ultimately, we have very little control in this life. And his way, his kingdom will endure, not ours. And so we come to this place where we all, our lives intersect with Jesus. And I would look at it as this way, not as like an intersection, but as a Y in the road. Because you can't stay one way. You have to choose. A lot of people are like, well, I don't know, you know, I just, I just want to do my own thing, you know, I kind of like Jesus, maybe not. But we have to make a decision. It's a Y in the road. You're either with him for him, believe and trust and have given your life to him, or you're not. You can't hang out in the middle. There's no middle of this road. Because Jesus made some very specific claims about himself. He said this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. It's a wide path in the sense that it's open to all, but it's very narrow in the fact that it's only through faith in Jesus Christ that we can have a relationship with our Father and eternity. Paul writes, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It seems like a simple confession, yet it has massive implications into our lives. We're no longer directing our lives, but we have given it to him as Lord. He is Lord. What is your response to Jesus today? We've looked at many different characters. What is your response to him today? Is it one of worship and submission to say your way above any? Or are you kind of stiff-arming him and holding him off? Can I encourage you today to have a, a response of worship and surrender and to confess that he is Lord of your life? I want to invite the worship team up, and we're going we're gonna to have a song that they'll play that will give us some time to reflect what is our response to Jesus today. And as I conclude, I want to read you this story. John was born in London in the year 1725. His father was a sea captain. His mother was a devout Christian woman who, realizing that an illness she had would take her life within a short time, taught her son to know the Bible at an early age. When John was seven, his mother died. He went to sea with his father when he was 11, and by the time he was 17, he was in the British Royal Navy on a man of war ship. During this time, John drifted far from the teachings of his mother. With each passing year, he sank deeper into the pit of sin. First, he was a sailor on a slave ship. Eventually, he was a captain, transporting slaves from Africa to ports where they could be sold for the best prices. Finally, one stormy night on a waterlogged ship in 1748, with the main mast broken in the two, John Newton came face to face with the God of his childhood Bible learning. There, and then and there, John was saved from his darkest sin. Many of you have heard the name John Newton, and probably I would say maybe many of you know that story, but you probably know even far more his response to Jesus because it's one of the greatest hymns that we sing as a church, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound, that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, 
but now I'm found. It was blind, but now I see. We all have a response to Jesus. And I pray that for each one of us here, we have come to that place like John did that was a response to say, Jesus, I believe that you came to this earth and you died for my sin. Amazing grace you have given me that you saved a wretch like me. I was blind, I was lost, but now I see. What is your response to Jesus? The joy of Christmas is that God sent his son to this earth. And for us as believers, there's a life that can come as we praise him and we say, thank you for coming to this earth. And what greater celebration than by seeing others respond to him as well. That is the hope we bring. That's the joy that we get to live with seeing people respond to Jesus. So how will you respond to him today? I want to invite you to listen to this song, and then we'll come up and pray.
Would you pray with me? Father, we, we come to you this evening recognizing whether we have known you for 50 years, 70 years, or just choosing to follow you today. We come every day with a choice to live with Jesus as Lord of our lives or to live apart from him. And so I pray that today for every heart in this room that they would make this choice to follow after you. That they would choose to respond as the shepherds did to hurry and say, we want to see Jesus. I want to know you. And that you would change their life. That they would see your great love for them. Oh, what manner of love the Father has given unto us. That we would be called sons of God. I want to do this this evening. I really think that the, we celebrate the birth of Jesus this evening. But we know that ultimately he went to the cross to die for our sin. And I want to give you opportunity because Paul says, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. There is a confession which means to say with. You are agreeing with that this is who I am. I need a savior. And I want him to be Lord of my life. And so I'm going to ask for a, a bold statement. If you are coming to faith in Jesus Christ this evening, would you proclaim, confess with your mouth, he is Lord? Would you say that out loud this evening? Father, we thank you. Thank you that each one of us has been given the opportunity to respond to you. And Lord, I pray that even if there is silence tonight, that that means that each one of us has chosen already to say you are Lord of our lives. So may we be a church that is encouraging and building up one another to go out into this world and be a light for you. We thank you that you sent your son and that we have seasons built into our lives that we just reflect more on the coming of the Savior and all that he came to do in us. We pray that you would be blessed and honored by our worship here tonight. It's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, I want to do this. Uh, I'm going to invite you to stand up. We have our candles here tonight. I hope all of you got one on the way in. If you, uh, if you have kids and they're in the bag and you want them to have a glow stick, those glow sticks are there. You can crack them open as we dim the lights down. Go ahead and take, take those lights down. I love the tradition of these candles, and it's amazing what one light in a room can do. You can take the lights all the way off. That's good. Um, got our little Christmas lights around. But it's amazing, even as we see this spread, that if you've been a part of a candlelight service, you know the room illuminates. And so as we have responded yes to Jesus following him, we illuminate the world around us. His work in us shines into this world. And so I, as we sing Silent Night tonight and this light goes around, let's enjoy this moment together. 
Oh, one instruction. Sorry. Failing on my instructions. Uh, Tilt the unlit candle to the lit candle. If you do it the other way, we got a waxy mess that we'll be cleaning up for a while. So unlit candle, tilt to the lit candle, and we'll all do great. All right, let's sing Silent Night together. One way that we love to put candles out here at Living Rock is to acknowledge people who have walked with the Lord for a long time. If you are here tonight and you are not a follower of Christ or at any point you just like, I want to put my candle out, totally fine. Don't feel bad at all. Just do it along the way. But we really value acknowledging people who have walked. There's something about seeing faithfulness. And I know for me, as I look ahead, I think of people who have walked with the Lord, say, oh, I want to be like that. I want to continue to follow him the way that they are and have seen his faithfulness in his life or in their lives. So we'll do that here tonight. How we do it is I'll start out. If you have received Christ, if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior within the last year, would you lift your candle up high? Just raise it up high. Anybody in the last year? All right. We got glow sticks in the back. Perfect. I love it. Awesome. I don't know how you put a glow stick out, but uh, you can go ahead and do that. Um, as we start putting these candles out, there's, there's a couple ways to do it. Um, you can blow it out, and uh, we'll have a smoky room, or you can... You can go like this, wet your fingers a little bit, and then just a, a little quick tap on it. If you're too afraid to do it, you can have your wife do it. Don't worry. Um, 
but those are a couple of the ways. Hopefully we don't have any fire extinguishers. Watch out for the hair along the way. How about three years? Three years you've known Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Would you lift your candle or glow stick up high? Three years. Are you lifting yours up there, Ivy? Yeah, yeah really. Okay. <laughs> good, good. Up high. Yeah, there's one in the back. Awesome. I love it. Go ahead and put that out. How about five years or less? Five years or less, lift that high, yeah, awesome, five years. How about 10 years or less, 10 years or less, you've known Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, awesome, that is great. Go ahead and put that candle out. 15 years or less, 15 years you've been walking with Jesus, 15 years, yeah, I love it. Very great. Go ahead and put that candle out. 20 years, 20 years. We're going for a couple decades here. 20 years of salvation, knowing Jesus. That's awesome. Yeah, several of you there. Great. 20 years. How about, uh, let's jump up. We'll go, we'll go start moving it up a little quicker. 30 years. We're getting a bigger gap right in here. 30 years, 30 years right in there. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. 30 years. That's great, seeing God's faithfulness. All right, 40 years, 40 years. Oh, yeah, I'm not even that. No, I, I am that old, actually, but uh, I'll lift it up. I wasn't born a believer, but go ahead, lift that up. How about... 50 years, a half a century, knowing Jesus right in there. Wow, I love it. That's awesome. Okay, we're going to go up. Uh, we're going 60 years, 60 years. Hey, there we go, a couple more. Awesome, awesome. All right, we're getting to a few left. We're... We're going to go to, uh, let's go 65. I'm kind of want to slow down in here, find out. We just got a few left. 65 years? No, no, okay, no takers. 70? All right, a couple. Is that it? How many years here? 70. 70, just at it. 72 or three. Ray and Joni in the back, what is it this year? 75, and then Ray, 85. 85. Hey. <laughs> oh, I love it. To see God's faithfulness for 85 years. I love it. Thank you, Ray and Joni. Well, let's turn those lights back up. Our candles are out. I have wax on my fingers. I don't know about yours. But we got one more thing as we leave tonight. I want to invite all the kids back up. You guys got a couple songs for us. Isn't that right? You've been learning them in your classroom. Come on up here on the stage, and you guys will sing us out this evening.
right. All right, stay up here, stay up here. Not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. Okay, you guys did an awesome job. Now we're, we're going to, uh, everybody stand, uh, stand back up, and we're going to let you guys sing through that one more time and do the We Wish You a Merry Christmas, and you guys are going to sing, and then you can turn and sing to one another if you like. All right, you guys ready? We wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good tidings we bring to you and your kin. Good tidings for Christmas and a Happy New Year. One more time we wish. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Hey, all right, give him a hand. Well, Merry Christmas. Go down and find your parents there. So good to be with you. Hey, we have a hot cocoa bar out there. It's got lots of toppings, anything you want in your hot cocoa. As well, kids, you might want to stick around. There is going to be a ton of bubbles over in this corner if you want to play in some bubbles. Hey, Merry Christmas. Enjoy being with one another. Hang out. Say hi to everyone. We love you, and we'll see you in the new year.